And you can do more than you can ever begin to imagine. And here I am. And the audience said, oh my goodness. I'd read The Power of Positive Thinking 17 times. My hero. And I saw him backstage and I said, Dr. Peel, hi, my name is Les Brown. I I've listened to your tapes and I I've read your books. Um, they gave them to us in special education, sir. And one day I would love to be on stage with you. And he looked at me and said, it's possible, young man. It's possible. But this man, when he spoke, he gave me goose pimples, deep baritone voice, dope spoke from his diaphragm. You have something special. You have greatness within you. He override the inner conversations in my mind. I I'll never forget um, a, a gentleman, what a brilliant man, a Harvard graduate, um, Dr. Carter G. Woodson. He said, if you can determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. If you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, never have to order him to go to the back door, he'll go without being told. And if there's no door, his very nature will demand one. See, we live in a world where we're told more about our limitations rather than our potential. How many of you have been told that you couldn't do something? Raise your hands, please. You know, MIT did a study that if I say to you, you can't do that, that 16 people have to come along and say, you can do that, you can do that, you can do that, to neutralize that, and the 17th statement that you hear, you can do it, will be the one that will finally stick. So you have to watch who's speaking into you. You've got to begin to monitor your mind. And, and you've got to begin to literally be proactive in programming yourself to success. Be ye not conformed to this world. Be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. You've got to take responsibility to make that happen. And as you begin to do that, you'll begin to see some incredible changes in your life. I understand now when Earl Nightingale said, all of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. As you begin to look at your dreams and look at your goals, write this down. Make know your vitamin. See, most people stop short of their dreams and park and get off the highway of life because of the rejections of life. You will always be rejected. It's no big deal. Jack Canfield said rejection is a myth. It's not like when somebody says no and then they slap you. No, it's just, you know, to me, make no your vitamin. Get excited about the no. Why? Because every time someone says no, that brings you another step to a yes. You're getting closer. Trust me, you will win if you don't quit. You will win if you don't quit. Even a broke clock is right twice a day. <laughs> the other thing is, as you look at yourself and look at your goals and look at your dreams, assess yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What do you bring to the table? When I looked at becoming a motivational speaker, I looked at all the speakers and I noticed that they were pretty much scripted. So I said, what is it that can make me stand out? I don't have any college education. Um, I don't have any credentials. I never worked for a major corporation. What is it I can do to offset my weaknesses? And then something said, well, Les, and this is very important. Mr. Washington, Mr. Brown, yes, sir. What do you want to do with your life? I want to become successful. Good. He said, you must be willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. That's why you said you have something special. See, very few people go to seminars and workshops. They'll go to a concert, but showing up to get something that can expand their minds and help them to begin to see their lives differently, to give them a larger vision of themselves, they'll be too busy or they'll say, well, how much does it cost? Well, information costs, but it pays for itself. Here's the other thing is, ladies and gentlemen, let's say it's me. Yeah, see, it's, it's possible you can live your dream. It's necessary that you have the mindset that, that I'm going to do this. But you've got to take ownership. You've got to decide, hey, I'm going to do this. You're going to, you've got to take responsibility for your life. George Bernard Shaw said, the people that make it in this life, they look around for the circumstances that they want, and if they can't find them, they create them. You've got to decide, it's me. You've got to say, and say this with, with conviction, I expect to win. Yes, I think it's important that we say that. You know, if you ask most people, do you want to become successful? They will say yes. Took my oldest son for a walk, my namesake. You know, we always expect our children to do far more than what we do. Said Calvin, he wants his own identity. He's Leslie Calvin Brown Jr. I stopped him, looked him in the eyes and said, do you want to be successful, son? He said, yes, sir, dad. Very good. 
Let's walk, son. Walk further. Stopped him again. I said, Calvin, look me in the eye, son. Yes, sir, Dad. Do you expect to be successful, son? And he stood there and he looked at me and his eyes got glassy. He said, let's walk. And the reason that he said, let's walk, because my son is very bright. Of all my children, he's perhaps the smartest one. But Calvin now, over 30, Calvin now, a single parent of two daughters, good father. Calvin, now at this stage of his life, he's behind on his dreams, a lot of talent, a lot of abilities, very conservative, one of those people, great mind, but just, he just hasn't developed that, oh, you know, things that we want our kids to have that, I want it. Calvin, Calvin, you got to kick it up a notch, son. You never thought you'd be in your 30s. You got to kick it up a notch. You got to increase your energy in order to, to live your dreams. You can't be casual about your dreams. Bill Bailey said, if you're casual about your dream, you'll end up a casualty. Shake someone's hand on your right and left and say, kick it up a notch. Yes. Yes. You got to kick it up a notch. What is it you bring? And whatever you bring, you've got to kick it up a notch. What is your signature? As you look at where you want to go and what it is you want to do, as you look at your product or your services, repeat out to me, please, provide more service than you get paid for. Yeah, see, that becomes your signature. When you look at your goals and look at where you want to go, at your products, at your services, at your industry, you want to set some high standards for yourself. I like what Henry David Thoreau said, do not go where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and leave a trail. How is it that your industry will be done differently five years from now, ten years from now? What is your reputation in your industry? When you come into a room and you leave, what's the scuttlebutt about you? Do people say, hey, that's a go-to person. That's a person, if you ask them to do that job, you're talking about the job being done. It will be done extremely well. Are you known for that person that, that stand out with what you do? That stand out with your quality of service, with your standards, always looking for ways to better your best? Are you one of those people that believe, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Japanese believe it ain't perfect, keep working on it. Are you willing to keep working on it? Are you, willing, are you willing to realize that you have not done your best stuff yet, that you can better your best? You've got to take responsibility for that. And now let's go to the next level. Not only is it possible that you can live your dream, is it necessary that you call forth your team and surround yourself with people that you can learn from and grow from, that you must work on yourself and monitor yourself and, and train yourself? that you've got to begin to take total responsibility for the outcomes that you want to produce in your life. But let us say together with power and conviction, it's hard. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, living a dream, changing your life, is hard. It's hard when you lose all your money, when you, you, you've given it the best that you have, when you have some major setback, it's hard. When a doctor looked at me and said the three horrible words no one wants to hear, you have cancer. It was hard to mobilize my mind and spirit, to listen to tapes and music and read scripture and be around other people and seeking out other prostate cancer conquerors to believe that I could do this. It was hard. Never forget my son said, Daddy, are you going to die? Why are you asking me that? You're not going out much. You're not the bubbly personality that I know you to be. You're not talking much. You're spending a lot of time in the room by yourself, Dad. Are you going to surrender? Are you giving up? Are you going to let that, that doctor's opinion become your reality? Will my daddy see me graduate? Yes, yes, son, yes, yes. I'm going to fight. No, no, I, I don't think it's my time yet. I'm going to see you graduate, but more than that, I've got some other things that I'm going to do with my life. And I thank you for asking me that. Um, but I must tell you that I'm scared. I'm scared. And um, I've never been in this situation before. It's, it's been easy for me to talk to people and encourage people when they've had challenges in their lives. Um, but it's me. And I don't feel less than a man in, in, in admitting this to you. Yes, I'm scared. And... I need some help. 
Repeat after me, please. Ask for help. Not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. And ask for help. And don't stop until you get it. Yes. Yeah, see, see, life is hard. And, and there are some moments in life when you're going to need some help. You're going to need somebody to speak to you. You're going to need somebody to say something to you. I have a friend of mine, Willie Jolly, who's a motivational speaker. He said a setback is a setup for a comeback. I had to listen to Willie's tapes. I have another friend, Kevin Brace, who's a, who's a speaker. He said, Les, come on, man. You can do this. You can make this happen. You can hit a home run. It's a done deal. You are Les Brown. That cancer's got to get out of your body. I said, talk to me, Kevin. Talk to me. That's what I need to hear. I needed to hear those words. I don't care who you are. Many people won't allow themselves to ask for help because of, of pride. Pride cometh before fall. Because of ego. Ego means edging God out. No, ask for help. Not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. And ask for help and don't stop until you get it. I'm here because a lot of people helped me. I'm here because a lot of people believed in me at a time when I was struggling to believe in myself. The other thing is, let us say together, it's worth it. Yeah, see, I think, and write this down, you've got to find five reasons that will make it worth it for you. Five reasons. What will make it worth it for you? Mine was, I want to take care of my mother. Mine was, I want to do something with my life. What will make it worth it for you? Mine is, I want to leave a legacy. Mine is, I refuse to die and unlive life. What will make it worth it for you? Repeat after me, please. You've got to be hungry. Mr. Washington said, Mr. Brown, what do you want to do with your life, sir? I, I want to become a disc jockey. Is that right? Yes, sir. Good. Mr. Brown, you got to be hungry. He said, I want you to listen to Paul Harvey. He's the world's greatest communicator. Always find a coach or mentor, someone that's doing what it is you want to do. Watch them. Listen to how he does the rest of the story. Listen to his voice, Mr. Brown. Develop your mind and develop your communication skills because once you open your mouth, young man, you tell the world who you are. And don't forget, Mr. Brown, you got to be hungry. Take the time to develop yourself. So I started training and working on myself. And then pretty soon, I came to him. I said, sir, I've been working on myself. I I've done the things that you told me to do. I listened to Earl Nightingale all the time and Zig, and, and I've been reading Dr. Norman Vincent Peale's book, and, and I'm ready. I, I practice every day two and three hours, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. Very good, Mr. Brown. You've got to be hungry. I said, why do you continue to say that? Sir, you, people that are hungry are unstoppable, Mr. Brown. People that are hungry, no excuse is acceptable. Go out and face the music, young man, and don't forget, stay hungry. And make no your vitamin. I went to apply for a job on Miami Beach. Milton Butterball Smith was the program director. Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you, sir? My name is Les Brown, sir. I like to be a disc jockey. He said, young man, you have any journalism in your background? And no, sir, I don't. You have any experience in broadcasting? No, sir, I don't. He said, I'm sorry, we don't have any job for you. I went back and I, I told Mr. Washington. I was devastated. I said, Mr. Washington. They said, no, they, they wouldn't even allow me to, to audition for them, sir. Mr. Brown, don't take it personally. I told you, make no your vitamin. Most people are so negative, they have to say no seven times before they say yes. Be unstoppable, Mr. Brown. You got to be hungry. Go back again. Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you, sir? My name is Les Brown, sir. I like to be a disc jockey. Young man, weren't you here yesterday? Yes, sir, I was. Didn't I tell you no yesterday? Yes, sir, you did. Then why are you back today? Well, sir, I didn't know the whether or not somebody was laid off or somebody was fired, sir. Nobody was laid off or fired. Now, get on out of here. I came back the next day. Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you, sir? My name is Les Brown, sir. I like to be a disc jockey. I know what your name is. Weren't you here the last two days? Yes, sir, I was. Didn't I tell you no the last two days? Yes, sir, you did. Then why are you back today? Well, sir, I didn't know whether or not someone got sick or someone died, sir. No one got sick or died. No one was laid off or fired. Now, don't you come back here again. I came back the next day talking loud, looking happy like I see you for the first time. Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you? He looked at me with rage. He said, go get me some coffee. I said, yes, sir.